What's up, Piper Drivers? So today, I'm kind of conflicted. You see, I just got in the brand new Ezra Bridger lightsaber from Rebels, and it's an awesome lightsaber hilt. But this is now my least favorite lightsaber. Let's talk about it. What's up, Piper Drivers and newcomers? I'm the Medina Lorian, and here on the Hyperdrive, we talk about Star Wars news, collecting, and video games. If you like the content that you see on this channel, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can jump to light speed every week with us right here on the Hyperdrive. The lightsaber I have today is Ezra Bridger's second lightsaber. His first lightsaber was constructed sometime after he was found by Kanan Jarrus, who began his training. The first lightsaber was powered by a blue kyber crystal and had a unique design resembling a blaster. It actually had the ability to fire shots, giving Ezra a ranged attack when he couldn't close in on his enemies. His adventures would eventually lead him to Malachor, where he discovered a much older Darth Maul. Together, the two uncovered the secrets of the Sith Temple and a Sith Holocron. While trying to protect the Holocron, his lightsaber was destroyed in a battle with Darth Vader. Lucky enough, he had Ahsoka Tano to help him in the battle, allowing Ezra and the crew members to escape with the Sith Holocron. Sometime after, and with the knowledge he received from the Sith Holocron, Ezra returned much more powerful, and with his newly constructed lightsaber now powered by a green kyber crystal. He used this lightsaber until he sacrificed himself by using the Force to control a pot of Purgles to take Grand Admiral Thrawn's fleet with him and Thrawn still aboard into the far unknown reaches of the galaxy. After his disappearance, Sabine Wren began to use his lightsaber under the training of Ahsoka Tano. Sabine has modified it slightly, specifically at the emitter, and that is what we will see soon in the Ahsoka series. So let's get into it. So this has been my least favorite lightsaber experience that I've had since I started to collect lightsabers again. So let me start off by saying that this has nothing to do with the company that I bought the lightsaber from. I picked this one up over at Vader Sabers with a Golden Harvest board. It ran $529 and they had it out to me within a week and a half, which is super fast. So I'm very happy with their service so far. And I was even able to reach out to their customer service to help me understand this board a little bit better, which they were very helpful and very patient about. So as far as I'm concerned, Vader Saber did their best to make me happy. My issue really is with the Golden Harvest board itself. You see, unlike the other boards that I'm used to, which is the Xeno Pixel, the Profi, and the SM Pixel boards, the Golden Harvest board uses gestures to change settings like sound effects and blade colors, something that I'm not really a fan of. When I got the board, my thought about it was that first, you know, it gives you the option similar to Profi and Xeno Pixel that you're allowed to install your own sound fonts, custom sound fonts, and blade colors, which it does allow, which that's very cool. And I also wanted to give you guys a new option for you guys to choose from, but I found it to be not a fun experience at all. You see with the Profi, Xeno Pixel, and SM Pixels, you can change your sound effects and your colors all on the fly with a push of the button. Very, very easy. With the Golden Harvest, you have to hold your blade in a certain angle, you gotta twist at a certain speed, you gotta double press or press long hold and then let go and then press again, and it's just a lot of complicated button sequences and gesture turns to create simple effects that should be something very easy to do. So I found myself out there in the dark, unable to change the colors of my lightsaber because I couldn't remember what angle I had to hold it up to, if I had to twist a certain way. So in my opinion, I don't like it. I wouldn't recommend it if somebody came to me and asked me, would you buy that type of board? Honestly, my, still my favorite is Profi. I do like Xenopixel a lot for those of you who are new to uh, lightsaber installs. So that's really it. That's my bad experience with this one. Uh, but there's a lot of great things about this lightsaber. So let's get into it. So first up, let's talk about what you get with the lightsaber. So from Vader Sabers, you're gonna get this really awesome carrying case that says Vader Sabers on it. I like these type of cases, you guys know that. You got the latch system on this one. It's not the uh, combination lock, uh, but it's still a very nice option for you to take to cons and, and whatnot, walk around being able to carry your lightsaber wherever you wanna go. So that's really cool, all right? Inside of the case, what you're gonna get is a key so that you can, uh, or a tool so that you can tighten down the Allen keys for your blade hilt, for your blade, I mean. You get a blade. This blade is different than the others, it's skinnier. So it's, I think it's like a 5 8 inch or something. So it's skinnier and smaller, which is cool. Uh, you get a specialized blade plug, which I like a lot. I like this, this is really cool. So the, the lightsaber hilt from Ezra has a very skinny emitter like this, you know, on the actual one from the from the TV show. So I like that they gave an op, you know, the the replacement 
to be able to put this on there rather than your normal blade plug. It also does come with a regular blade plug as well. If you wanna take and put that in, you can use that. I wouldn't use this, it's very long, you know, so you have to take and cut it in order to make that work. All right, the back part of the pommel, if you didn't wanna see the holes in the back of your uh, lightsaber, you have a cap so that you could put that on as well. So then, you know, if you wanted to just display it as the hilt, it would look like the hilt from the TV show. So that's really cool, all right? You get a set of instructions. And just to show you the complication of using Golden Harvest, these are your instructions, okay? Look at this. Pages <laughs> of instructions, front and back too, uh, to tell you, you know, what to do. And, you know, here's just some of the options. Um, change the blade profile, slowly twist the saber, T tap the button, hold the button down, the confirmation sound played, hold the button then, you know, hold again. So you have to like press it twice in order to get, you know, certain types of effects. And that's just among the things that, that I wasn't really happy with when it came to this one. Um, you get a, uh, a plaque to put on your display stand because you get a, one of those nicer display stands like this, which is cool, it's acrylic, and then it has a little slot right here where you could take and put your plaque into. And this one says Ezra, and you just take and put that in, uh, and that's cool. So I like that. I like to display my lightsabers on the wall, so that's not something I'm gonna be using. Uh, and you get a set of gloves, all right? And here is the lightsaber hilt for Ezra Bridger. This thing is awesome. I love how this lightsaber looks. So you do have the option from Vader Sabers to get it weathered. Uh, I got the clean version is because I'm gonna weather it myself. Uh, this is the emitter that you would use when you wanna take and put the blade in. Okay, so that's how that looks like that. So there's your emitter. I like these thin necks, I always have, so it kind of reminds me of the uh, Kenobi or the uh, Luke Skywalker lightsaber from uh, Return of the Jedi. So that's really neat. And you got that grenade style there. And it's cool because like when you want to, you know, twist and use the lightsaber and all that to do stunts, you know, it makes for a very easy uh, spot to hold from, okay? You got that switch right here that does nothing. I think this was some kind of potentiometer in the TV show, so it allowed for the blade to be stronger or, or weaker when you're practicing and stuff. Uh, you have this greebly section right here, which reminds me very much of like the, um, the Luke Skywalker, I'm sorry, the Anakin Skywalker lightsaber. You got that switch like this. It's a one button system for the Golden Harvest. Okay, and then the rest of the hilt is black there on the opposite side. And then there's your pommel, and you got a D-clip here, or a triangle clip, so that you can clip that to your belt. And you can see there's your opening on the back of the, of the pommel, so that you can uh, get sound from it. And it does sound uh, really good. Okay, now comparatively, I just got this exact same lightsaber from uh, Galaxy's Edge. So let me bring that over here and you guys can take a look at the difference in size between this one and the Galaxy's Edge version. All right, here is the Galaxy's Edge lightsaber on the right side and then your Vader sabers on the left side. And just from the back, you can see how much bigger the Galaxy's Edge lightsaber is uh, comparatively. So it's, it's much thicker, it's fatter. Uh, you can see that the emitter is much more bigger. You know, so everything about the Galaxy's Edge one is huge in comparison to the one from Vader Sayers. The only things that I like a little bit better about the one from Galaxy's Edge is the color. I like that this has more of a gunmetal to it and this one's a little more silver, you know, so that's kind of cool. And I also like that you got this little gold accent here at the very top. I think that would've been kind of neat to have on this one as well. So that's something that I could probably give a one up on the Disney, but um, still, this is night and day difference between the two of them. I'd much rather would have something like this over this. Now, if what you're looking to do is to change the emitter out so that you can uh, display it on your wall. What you're gonna take is remove, is remove this part of the emitter, this very front part. So you hold onto the neck and then you just twist this off and then you can put this one on. There you go. Now it's on. And then it'll even shine light out of it. Turned off. See, which is cool. I like that. All right, so the blade's now installed and you have three retention screws that hold down your blade. You got one down the center and then one on each side of the emitter. So it gives it a nice uh, sturdiness to it. You don't get any vibration when it hits. That's really cool. Another thing I like about this hilt um, now, when you notice that I have gesture turned on, that's not something that's turned on when you first get the lightsaber. You're gonna actually have to go into settings to turn on that feature. 
And on this particular lightsaber that I'm noticing, it's extremely sensitive compared to uh, Profi or Xenopixel or even SM Pixel. So any, any slight movement on my wrist seems to ignite the blade, which is good, but it's also a little bit obnoxious sometimes, but sometimes you know, I'm just holding it like this and it turns on. So, you know, I wish you would just understand when I'm actually using the lightsaber versus when I just have it on the table and I turn it. Like that, I don't even know how I did that. So, uh, so those are the options there. Now, the effects that come with it are just like any of the others. You have a blade hit, which works really well, okay? You got smooth swing, and the smooth swing works really good. I love how the, the speaker sounds. The speaker sounds very nice. It's just loud enough for me to hear it, but not obnoxiously loud like Xenopixel. So I think that's really cool. I don't have to really make any adjustments to the sound on this one. So that's good. You got the blaster, the blaster bolt effect. Okay, and you have uh, blade clash. All right. Another thing I like about this type of lightsaber uh, is that you get the blade melt or blade without having to press any button. It just knows that when you're hitting the tip, it creates that effect, which I think that's really cool too. The lightsaber hilt itself I found to be very, very comfortable to use. It's nice and light. It's a good, a good size to it. I like that the switch is not so, uh, it's not protruding so much that it stabs into your hand. So that's really good for when you want to take and do uh, all kinds of different, you know, uh, blade stunts, you know, lightsaber stunts or, or choreography and stuff like that, your hands won't get uh, fatigued from, uh, from using the hilt. When I had it outside playing around with it, I liked, you know, the way it handled when I was using it. So for that, I love the lightsaber in that sense. All right. So that's the effects that it comes with. And that's my thoughts on this Ezra Bridger lightsaber. I think it's a fantastic hilt. I really do like the hilt. It's one of my favorite lightsaber hilts that I have in my collection now. So I can highly recommend that if you wanna get this Ezra Bridger hilt, this is the one to get over any of the others that are out there. I like this hilt a lot. I would not get this in the Golden Harvest. That's just my opinion. If you like this type of lightsabers, SM Pixel is a nice option for you. It's less money and you get the Neo Pixel, which is great. Or you can bump up to Profi. I really love Profi boards and I would highly recommend getting it that way if that's what you were gonna do. But that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think about this lightsaber in the comments below, and until next time, may the force be with you.